Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Tolu and in this video, I'm going to be talking about five habits that people have that put their vagina in trouble. Right, that's five habits that people have that can increase the risk of having problems with their vagina. So if you like what I have to say, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment for me letting me know if you found this video useful. And you can also leave a comment for me if there's any topic you would like me to discuss in the nearest future. All right guys, so let's get straight to it. Number one on my list is that people don't pee after having sex. It is important for women to urinate after sex. And the reason why is because we've come to realize that women who don't urinate um, after having penetrative sex have an increased risk of coming down with urinary tract infections. Now, you may have noticed that I did not say maybe they have a, an increased risk of vaginal infections, but then having sex, vaginal sex, when that happens because of the close contact that the vagina has with the penis, that can lead to transfer of some bacteria. And because women have a shorter urinary tract, right, than men, so there's a higher chance in women of whatever bacteria that comes close to the vagina and the ritual opening, there's a greater chance of it traveling up and then causing all sorts of um, urinary tract problems. So make sure that after having um, penetrative vaginal sex that you urinate afterwards. It can really help to reduce your risk of coming down with urinary tract infections. Now, number two on my list, washing the vagina. It is very important for us to understand why we should not wash the vagina. Now, but before we go into that, I'm going to briefly explain the difference between the vagina and the vulva. Now, a lot of people, when they hear vagina, what actually comes to their mind is the vulva. But here's the simple difference. The vulva is the external female genitalia. What that means is that any part of the female genitalia that you can see, let's say the labia, the clitoris, everything, that outer anatomical structure, that makes up the vulva. The vagina, on the other hand, is that inner muscular tube that passes from the vaginal opening into the cervix, right? In fact, the place where the penis enters during um, vaginal sex, that is the vagina. But the outer part you can see, that is the vulva, right? So now it's important not to wash the vagina. It's important to wash the vulva, right? That's the external part. And those who, you know, to wash your vulva, it's enough for most people to use warm water just to clean it, right? For the vagina, it's a self-cleaning organ. What that means is the vagina cleans itself. It doesn't really need you to clean it, right? Now, it's important when cleaning the vulva because some of the things that come out of the vagina come towards the vulva to clean your vulva because the vagina has microorganisms in it, what we call the vaginal flora in a perfect balance, right? But when you go in, and you decide to wash the vagina, what it does is it upsets this balance. So think of the vagina as having good organisms and bad organisms, and both of them have an agreement and they are at peace. The vagina is fine. Right. But when you go in to wash the vagina, what you tend to do is to get rid of the good organisms, what we call the lactobacilli, and then you leave more space for the not so good ones to thrive. So that can lead to an overgrowth of all sorts of things. Like for instance, many people who have vaginal yeast infections or what we call vulvo and vaginal candidiasis, many of them who have um, vaginal yeast infections, when you ask them questions, taking a clinical history, you find out that they engage in washing the vagina. So that is the second mistake that I'm discussing today. You don't need to wash your vagina. And number three on my list, using scented products or sprays down there. Now it's important, like I've explained, not to use scented products or sprays down there. And like I explained, it is because those products have a higher risk of upsetting the vaginal level of acidity, alkalinity, right? What we call the pH level. And when that is upset, it increases the risk of coming down with um, vaginal infections. And not just that, but it can also cause irritation of the vulva, the vagina, and the female genitalia in totality. So it's important that when washing the vulva, that you stick with warm water and avoid scented products. Number four on my list is self-medication. Now, what I mean by this is 
that when you have any symptoms let's say you have a smell down there that you are not happy with or let's say you notice that your vaginal discharge is different and you are not happy with or maybe there's some itching or burning sensation down there it's important for you not to just decide to medicate yourself right it's very important for you to see your healthcare provider and find out what exactly is going on now this is important because a lot of problems with the vagina can resemble themselves right for instance um, something like bacterial vaginosis if it is not properly diagnosed it can be mistaken or misdiagnosed for a vaginal yeast infection right and now those two things are entirely different and they have different ways of treatment but if you decide to self-medicate and then you see maybe bacterial vaginosis and then you think it's yeast infection so therefore you now go and start using antifungals rather than using um, antibiotics what that can lead to is that the problem remains because you are not giving it the right treatment and when that happens any vaginal infection that remains has a risk of you know, traveling up the reproductive tract causing issues like pelvic inflammatory disease and in worst case scenarios can lead to problems like infertility or can even increase the risk of coming down with a gynecological form of cancer right now of course those are like worst case scenarios but then it's best for those who have the practice of self-medicating whenever they see any vaginal or you know vulval symptoms it's important for you to stop doing that and to see your healthcare provider so that you can get a proper diagnosis proper treatment fifth thing on my list is for those who use toilet paper after defecating right when wiping it's important for you not to wipe from back to front wiping from back that's from the inner region to the front towards the urethral opening and the vagina that can move organisms that should normally be found in the anus that can move it towards the vagina and over time or even in a short space of time it can lead to vaginal infections so it's important when wiping to make sure that you are wiping from front to back right so you are moving from the front to the back to get rid of um, whatever fecal matter may be around your anal orifice and this is also important for those who may be doing um doing sex anything that moves from the anus to the vagina let's say that you and your partner you engage in some form of anal stimulation let's say um um, maybe rimming right and then you are going from the anus and then putting it around your vulva vaginal area that can transfer organisms there that can lead to vaginal infections later on so it's important to avoid anything that moves from the anus to the vagina whether when you are wiping after defecating or when you're engaging in um, sex So those are the five common mistakes that people make that put their vagina in trouble and i hope you found this video useful now there are other things right that people do um, that may predispose them to vaginal problems infections but these are the five that i think are quite common so guys if you found this video useful please hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave a comment for me telling me how useful you found this video and until you know i have another video for you bye -a.